Hello everyone, and welcome to Threatened Ganglia Stuff We Missed for Season 1, Episode 12, Vaulting Ambition. So much stuff went on this past week, and we babbled about it so much during our recap show that, believe it or not, even though we talked for almost like an hour and a half, we still managed to miss a couple things. Just little points, some things, and at the end of this video, I'm going to throw out, I have half a theory on the final episode. I'm pretty excited. Things we missed. We're at warp now because we're talking about stuff that we missed in our last little discussion. First thing is that Gabriel and Michael, the both the main characters from this season, both of those are the names of archangels. That could just be a, a coincidence, but I hope it's not a coincidence along the lines of Valstar Galactica and how people were angels and all the wackiness. There's a lot of people that are talking about the Tyler Volk, uh, Tyler being put in a Volk's body. And that whole plot line didn't really go anywhere because now it looks like Volk is dead and it, it didn't really get us much of anything and it was just a crappy little B plot throughout the season. Nothing came of it. Well, in a way that's semi true, but it was a way for the Tyler character to be introduced because he was dead already. We never would have met him at all. Sure, you could say that, well, he should just should have came on the, the ship then as a new character. But now with the the Tyler Volk phenomenon that we have, we have a whole bunch new stuff that rears its head. First thing is, is that is it really only Tyler in there now or did Laurel manage to just push Volk's consciousness down and it'll come out in another season and a half, two seasons? I don't know. No matter what, though, we have to have Tyler dealing with what he is now. Could you imagine getting up and finding out that your consciousness was put inside someone else's body that was just made to look like you? That would freak me out a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. I would be like, hey, why didn't you put me in a body of someone that looked a little better? But that's just me. Is Tyler guilty of Colbert's murder? Is Tyler guilty of all the different stuff that Voke did? Because, I mean, he is physically Voke, but... But he's not really Volk. To me, that that's that's like drunk talk there. Like you can go off oh, that we can spend the whole half of the season if Tyler survives, uh, talking about that. The half of the off season. One other thing going away from the Tyler Volk stuff for a moment. During after track, Anthony Rapp mentioned how Stamets and Tyler do have a scene together in two episodes. Anthony Rapp was pleased how it came out as an actor. So I'm really looking forward to that scene because can you imagine having to deal with, hey, this thing right here, this being killed the person you love, but it wasn't really him. It was someone else that was in him, but it was him. Oh, man, that's hurting my brain. Hurting my brain in an awesome way. I'm really looking forward to that. Got to give big props to... Got to give big props to Trek Corps, because they found this little ditty. Uh, they tweeted it out this past week. They went and they took the scene with the tricorder that had all the redacted info and got as much non-redacted info off that screen as you could. I went in, I pushed in on that image and blew it up as big as I could, and I couldn't make out all this different stuff. So uh, there's all the text there. You can pause it to read it, but they are definitely having some kind of link with the Enterprise episodes, whether or not this is the same Mirror Universe, a different Mirror Universe. There's a million and one different theories out there. I can't get into all of that. Well, I mean, I could. But then this video, too, would get too long. So that was Trek Core. Now we have mm, one day I'm going to learn how to point right. We have this cool image over here, which is a uh, screen capture of the show when they were dealing with the light sensitivity issue. Not just light sensitivity. It's like changes in light. This also harkens back to it when Burnham earlier in the episode when she was doing that big long voiceover two episodes ago. I forget. It's also confusing. She mentioned that even the light here looked different. That was just another one of those little breadcrumbs that they dropped to try and let you know that things were up. Plus, no matter what, the light sensitivity thing got us that awesome scene where Jason Isaacs goes and puts those drops in his eyes just before the ship of the dead blows up. And this uh, b b busting up cannon is worth it to me if it can get that kind of a cool scene. So then we have this image over here. Everyone recognizes this one from the uh, the different posters. You might see it with a little uh, Netflix on the bottom of it, or you might see it with a little 
uh, CBS All Access underneath it. It's a cool thing. You know, she's doing the, the Vulcan salute and everything. You got the Discovery flying up through there in the middle. It looks really cool, doesn't it? There's like a little planet down there. And what happens when you go and you compare that image with the image of the mirror, what the mirror universe symbol looks like for the uh, Empire? Boom! Look at that. That's beautiful. You got the little planet. You got the discovery coming out just like that sword. You got the upside down delta with her hand. That's cool stuff. I know someone did that on purpose, and that's pretty awesome. Thank you. All right. I think that is all we've got for the go to warp part. Black alert for the threatened ganglia stuff I do is the theory talk about things that aren't definite yet, and we're like talking about episodes down the road. Some people don't like that. They can just like kind of sign off right here. Please subscribe, like, hit the bell. Black Alert, is, if you're not interested in, in discussing theories and learning about stuff that might come down the road, you should tune out now. Uh, thank you. Tune in Tuesday. We'll have an episode discussion on episode 13. I don't even know what it's titled yet because I'm all over the place. Black Alert for this week. One thing that I did miss was trying to figure out what is going to happen? Which universe is this crew going to be in at the end of this season? Are they going to stay in the mirror universe? I really hope not. I I couldn't take it with the whole thing. Uh, unless they're doing a cliffhanger of like they spore jump one last time and, and that's where the season ends. And if that happens, I will not be able to deal with the number of theories that will come up online if we have over a year to, to think about it. Will they come back to the same universe that they left? But if they do that, I gotta hope that the fungus, huh, no matter what, it's a fungus, the problems with the spore network end up essentially breaking the spore network so they can't use that at all. That would explain why you don't have spore ships anymore in the future. Round up the canon question with regards to that, that the writers have promised us that they're going to address virtually all of them. If they don't address that one, that's going to be a big, huge one. Another canon question, if they return to our universe, is the, the Klingon war and the Klingons having the cloak and so much Klingon stuff happening just 10 years before Enterprise when they did didn't act like there was a at least six month Klingon war that would have came up that's breaking canon to a degree that is a little bit like uh yee. the one in my eyes that cleans up canon the most they started they started over here in uh in universe a and now they're in the mirror universe and then when they leave the mirror universe, they end up in universe B. And universe B is our prime universe, the one that we're used to seeing, the one that we've seen everything of in all the different TV shows. That's my belief. They get back there. Season two is them dealing with trying to integrate themselves into the new universe. But, you know, could be anything. But that's just my personal one that seems to wrap everything up the best. So now what I would like to do is is uh, discuss the final episode of this season. The final episode of this season is titled, Will You Take My Hand? Of course, that makes it seem like someone's getting married. Somebody's getting married. What is that from? Muppets? I don't know. They'll probably sue me. Will You Take My Hand is obviously commonly known as a reference to marriage. People are rightfully assuming they're hoping that the doctor comes back, Dr. Kolber, and he and Stamets get together and they get hitched if they aren't already hitched. But I thought that they referred to each other as that at some point. But I have a half of a different theory, and that regards this. I'm going to throw a little clip up here. I'm going to get covered up for a minute. Don't worry, I'll be back. This is from the intro that we've been watching all season. And we know that other parts of this intro refer to different things that have happened in the season. And I think this part I'm going to show you is all about the final episode. The episode's titled, Will You Take My Hand? I think what ends up happening is two people are obviously outside the ship, outside a ship, somewhere outside in space. Something happens where one's trying to save the other one and the other one doesn't want to be saved. What I'm picturing is Burnham and Tyler are outside the ship somewhere and something's going on and somehow Tyler is having trouble dealing with all this stuff. 
all that BS I talked about before, and he just wants to let himself die, and Burnham is begging him to take her hand that they can work this, they can figure out a way. She just doesn't want them to die. And I think that end little sequence there where the hands just disappear is that they, they're never together again. And that Tyler dies. That's my thought. Could be anyone outside the ship. I hope it's not Hugh and Paul because that, that'll be too heartbreaking. Like I want a, a definitive thing where they don't have to interact anymore if Hugh's not going to be on the show because uh, I'm emotionally invested in those two. Michael and Tyler... Uh, whatever. I mean, it'll be great for Michael if she, you know, can be happy for a minute in this show. Aside from when she's ribbing Saru at the beginning in the first two episodes. That's what I hope the case is. So that's my half a theory. It's a half a theory because it's not fully thought out all the way. But I definitely feel that that last imagery in the introduction has something to do with it. Thank you very much. Remember, check back Tuesday uh, around 9 p.m. Eastern. We should be going live. Check out all the links. All the info is down there. And subscribe, please. Thanks. Bye. Of course, after I did this video, I realized that they could really be screwing us by having a wedding ceremony and the wedding be Mud's wedding at the very end. But that would be way too cheeseball.